Good day everyone. Welcome once again to our lecture for today. So today we are going to focus our discussions on the partial derivatives. So this is chapter 13 of our of our uh, digital, digital resources. No, calculus 11 plus E by Howard Anton, Earl Vivens and Stephen Davis. Copyright 2016 by John Willie and Sons Incorporated. All rights reserved. So what we're going to do here is just to uh, show you briefly you know, the concepts, the basic principles, major theorems, figures, and uh, there's some students' response uh, questions as well. But I think I will limit uh, my discussion or my brief discussion on this media theorems and figures. All right, so we have heard the uh, uh, definition in this chapter, 13.1.1, uh, .1. uh, function of two variables, x and y, is a rule that assigns a unique real number, uh, function of x and y, to which point x and y, uh, the coordinates of a point in some set d, in the xy plane okay and then we have here uh, definition 13.1.2 a function of three variables x y and z is a rule that assigns a unique real number function of x y z to which point x y z so these are the uh, coordinates of the point in a, in a three-dimensional Oh, in some set D in three-dimensional space. All right, so here's some illustration. It's a perspective view of a model hill with two gullies. All right, and then if you have to find the contour of this one, so this is what you can see as a contour map of the model hill. All right, uh, we have also have here a level curve of height K. So we have here a function of x and y equal to k. So we have here the x, y, and z uh, plane, three-dimensional. Okay, so the plane here, uh, we have here z as a function of x and y. All right, so the height z, so that is in terms of uh, z here is a function of x and y. Okay, so this is the level curve of height k where f of or the function of the two variables x and y is equal to k so here we have uh, for this particular uh, position of the plane we have here z is equal to k then we have here a function of x and y an illustration of this uh, three-dimensional three figures so this is the uh, product, uh, the product of uh, sine x and sine y, and this is the contour map. Okay, so this is the other illustration that represents this one also. Okay, and then for for this kind of uh, figure, so we have here the level uh, level surfaces of f of x, y, and z. This is equivalent to z squared minus x squared minus y squared. So from this illustration, so again, this is a three-dimensional uh, figure. So we have here our x, y, and z axis. So uh, this, uh, considering this uh, inner uh, figure here, so this is this corresponds to k greater than zero, and for this part here, this is for our uh, k equal to zero. So that intersect at this uh, uh, the point of intersection of the three axes, and for this one that is for uh, k less than zero. So if you see that's already below, no? below the x y plane. All right. So for surfaces uh, from this uh, illustration, so again we have here the x y z axis. So z here is uh, represented by uh, cosine y. Actually, this is a, a cosine. If you look at this part here, this is a cosine curve. But this is a surface that follows the cosine uh, cosine function. 
Okay, so the contour plot of this uh, looks like this. Another uh, uh, surface that looks like this that's uh, involved exponential. Right, so if you look at this, this is uh, an exponential curve. So z here, the z is a function of uh, x and also y. And this uh, uh, kind of uh, surface uh, is a function of uh, x as a power of the exponential and also a sine. This is also a sinusoidal uh, surface. And the contour plot uh, look like this. So another uh, surface, okay, so this is given as a z equal to sine of the square root of x squared plus y squared. Right, so our z here as a function of uh, the two other coordinates, x and y coordinates. And the co contour plot, so it looks like this. Another surfaces or surface, so we have here a very uh, complex uh, surface. Uh, z here is expressed in terms of uh, x and y, in terms of two variables, x, y, x times y, uh, raised to power or times e, raised to power negative one half, times the sum of the square of x square, uh, the sum of the square of x and the square of y or e to the minus one half x squared plus y squared and if you draw the contour plot so it looks like this so another one we have here another uh, surface where z here uh, is a function of if you look at this this is a cos uh, uh, cosine no? cosinusoidal uh, surface so z here is a function of x and y. Uh, so this is a cosinusoidal. So we have here the cosine, cosine function. And the contour plot is something like this. Uh, another surface. So we have here x, uh, sorry, z is given as a function of x and y, just the product of x and y. So this is the kind of surface that... Uh, is represented by this kind of graph. In other words, if you're going to plot this uh, this uh, surface class, you just substitute values for x and y, and you just connect the points, and you will see this kind of uh, surface. And the con and the contour plot uh, looks like this. Okay, so uh, if you can still remember in our uh, previous discussion at the very beginning. Uh, we have the x and y coordinates uh, only, or we have the xy plane, but this time we have the uh, three-dimensional system. All right. So a point here is uh, for this one, for example, we have here. So we have here this z. Okay, this is our x. This is our y. So these are the positive components of the three uh, coordinates. Uh, axis so for the height here or of this point so z here is a function of the two uh, other variables that it, that is x and y so this point here is represented by uh, we have x sub t y sub t all right so this is the uh, x coordinate uh, y coordinate the abscissa and the ordinate if you look at the if you compare it with the x1 x1 y plane and this is the height no? the height of this so that is represented by f sub x sub t and y sub t so this point here coordinates x sub t and y sub t so this is the vertical component so this is the horizontal means this is the distance from uh, from the y-axis, uh, sorry, from the no, from this axis here, right? So going to that point, and this is for the y component no, from from here to to that point. Okay, and then the limit, no, the limit of this uh, function of the two variables is uh, along the c. No? This is our c. 
this is our C curve. Okay, so the limit of x, uh, the limit of the function of the two variables equal to L as the x and y approaches to x sub 0 and y sub 0. Okay, so this is this uh, coordinates here. So equal to the limit of our function. So another definition, we have uh, let f be a function of two variables and assume that f is defined at all points of some open desk centered at this coordinates or coordinates uh, except possibly at x sub 0 and y sub 0. So we will write the limit of uh, the function of two variables x and y equal to L as x and y or this uh, uh, set of values x, y approaches to x sub 0, y sub 0. If given any number, that is an, uh, any number uh, e uh, greater than 0, so we can find uh, the, the delta, the increment or the, the delta that is greater than, than 0 such that the function of two variables satisfy this condition here. Okay, that the difference of this uh, value of the function at x and y minus the limit is less than this e. This is a given number, any given number e. So whenever the distance between x, y, uh, the distance between the points with the coordinates x and y and the points with the coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0 satisfy this condition here that the the square root of the square of the difference of the two ordinates or the two x values and the uh, square of the difference of the uh, y values so this should be greater than zero but this uh, part here must be less than the delta okay the delta here Right, so from our illustration, so this illustration set, uh, uh, discusses this uh, mathematical expression class. So the circular region with center removed consists all points uh, with coordinates x and y that satisfy this condition here. Okay, so this is this plane here uh, represented by z equal to l plus e and this one here, so this is z equal to l minus e. Alright, so this is our delta class. This is the coordinates of our uh, point that is at x sub 0 and y sub 0. Okay, so this is actually the, the intersection, uh, the intersection of the uh, x and y uh, z coordinates sorry the intersection of the x and y coordinates right so uh, further so to illustrate that uh, a concept so we have here an illustration so this is the limit our L so this is our uh, at this point uh, we have L minus E and this is our L plus E so this is the domain where our function of our uh, function of two variables X and Y so at this point so if you look at this one so this is the point of our uh, circular uh, region you now as mentioned in this slide okay so another theorem if function of x and y uh, approaches l as this uh, x and y the open uh, sorry the, the x and y approaches this the coordinates of this point or the point which has the coordinates x y approaches to this uh, point with coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0 then uh, f of x and y approaches L as x and y approaches to x sub 0 y sub 0 along uh, any smooth curve 
Okay, so if the limit of this function, function of two variables, fails to exist as x and y approaches to this uh, point with these coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0, along some sm smooth curve, or if a function of x and y has different limits as uh, this uh, coordinate of a point x and y approaches this uh, point with the coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0, along two different smooth curves, then the limit of this function uh, does not exist as uh, this coordinate of the point x and y approaches to this coordinate of the points x sub 0, y sub 0. Okay, so we have here another definition. A function of these uh, two variables, function of two variables is said to be continuous at this point with uh, this value, uh, function, uh, value of the function at this coordinates of the point is defined and if the limit of the function of two variables equal to this uh, value of the function with coordinates uh, x sub 0, y sub 0, as this one approaches to this coordinate with x sub 0, uh, point with this coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0. So in addition, if if is continuous at every point in, a to, in an open set D, then we say that f is continuous on D. And if, if, if f is continuous at every point in the xy plane, then we say that f is continuous everywhere. So recognizing continuous functions, a composition of continuous function is continuous. A sum, difference, or product of a continuous function is continuous. A question of a continuous function is continuous except where the denominator is equal to zero. So we have what we call vertical jump at a region. For example, we have this uh, x, y, uh, z coordinates. So vertical jump. If you look at this, this is the uh, plane. And then there's a, a vertical jump having this plane. So a theorem, if a function of x is continuous at x sub 0, and the function of y is continuous at y sub 0, then the function of the two variables x and y equal to a function of x multiplied by a function of y is continuous at this uh, point with coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0. If a theorem b, so this is our theorem a for theorem b, if a function of two variables x and y is continuous at this uh, point with coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0, and uh, function of u is continuous at u equal to a function of x sub 0 and y sub 0, then the composition of f of x, I mean, the function of x and y is just the uh, function of an, a function of uh, two variables is continuous at this point with these coordinates. And if uh, f of x sub y is continuous at x sub at a point coordinates x sub zero and y sub zero, and if of if x sub t and y sub t are continuous at t sub zero, with x sub t sub zero equal to x sub zero and y sub t sub zero is equal to y sub zero, then the composition of the a function of a function of t or the function with the coordinates of x sub t and y sub t is continuous at t sub 0. So another definition, let f be a function of three variables and assume that f is defined at all points with, within a ball centered at this coordinates, x sub 0, y sub 0, z sub 0, except possibly at x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0, no, uh, except at this point with these coordinates. So we will write that the limit of the function of three variables x, y, z is equal to L. So as these three variables x, y, z approaches to this, this uh, point with these coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0. If given any number e that is greater than 0, 
So we can define the number delta that is greater than 0 such that this function of three variables x, y, z satisfies this condition that the absolute value or the difference uh, that the absolute the difference of the absolute value of the function of uh, the function with uh, or the value of the function with the coordinates x, y, z minus l is less than e. So whenever the distance between this uh, point with these coordinates x, y, z and the uh, point with the co coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0 and z sub 0 satisfy this uh, condition that uh, this uh, square root of the sum of the squares of the difference of this, uh, uh, for example, x, uh, x minus x sub 0 and y minus uh, y sub 0 and uh, z minus z sub 0. So if you are going to square the difference of, of these uh, terms and then take the square root, so these values should be greater than 0, but this one should be uh, less than the delta. So another definition, we have uh, if z is a function of x and y and x sub 0 or the point with coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0 is a point in the domain of f, then the partial derivative of f, okay, so take note of the term now huh? because uh, this is the very important term that we need to understand. Now, the partial derivative of f with respect to x at this point with these coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0, also called the partial derivative of z with respect to x at this point with coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0 is the derivative at x sub 0 of the function that result when y equal to y sub 0 is held fixed means you held the other variable as constant or fixed and x is allowed to vary all right so please focus your attention class on this uh, concept because uh, we will dwell in our examples we will dwell our discussions on this part of the uh, of the whole presentations or whole discussion okay so allowing x to vary huh? the other variable y is held constant so this partial derivative is denoted by uh, there are a lot of uh, notation so one of them is something like this uh, partial derivative of so f sub uh, when, when we have this kind of notation class this means that uh, we're taking the uh, partial derivative with respect to x holding the other variable as constant okay so f of x uh, or the partial derivative so this is really as partial derivative of uh, this uh, function uh, at this point okay equal to uh, the derivative of the function at x uh, function of x uh, we are allowing x here to vary and holding y as constant and this is equivalent to the limit of f sub x sub 0 plus delta x okay and then y sub 0 minus f sub x sub 0 y sub 0 divided by delta x as delta x approaches to 0 okay so x here is equal to x sub 0 similarly the partial derivative of f with respect to y at this point with these coordinates x sub 0 y sub 0 is also called the partial derivative of z with respect to y at this point with coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0 is the derivative at y sub 0 of a function that result when x equal to x sub 0 is held fixed and y is allowed to vary. So this partial derivative is noted by this uh, notation no? f uh, sub y of x sub 0 and y sub 0 and is given by this formula no? uh, f sub y of x sub 0 and y sub 0 equal to the derivative of the given function uh, x sub 0 or the x is, hold, is held constant y is allowed to vary so we are differentiating it with respect to 
y. So, we're differentiating it partially. We call it partial differentiation for y is equal to 0. And this is equivalent to the limit of the function of x sub 0, you know, function of uh, this uh, point with these coordinates plus the increment of the uh, y part or uh, the height of the function uh, minus the uh, function at this point, you know, the value of the function at this point, at these coordinates divided by delta y as delta y approaches to 0. So these are the, I think there are, uh, these are the important uh, concept class that you need to remember no? and understand so that uh, when we do the examples, you can easily relate. Okay, so in, in our illustration, so we have here some, some three-dimensional uh, uh, plane here, plane. So we have here, uh, considering this plane, Okay, this plane, the orange one, and we also have the blue one. And you see that this plane intersects with this uh, other plane, and we have this uh, specific point. So uh, if you draw the line that is tangent to this point, so we can have the slope that is equivalent to, uh, slope is equal to the uh, partial derivative of, now this is a f of f sub x of x sub 0 and y sub 0, okay? And z here is equal to uh, function of x and y. So z at this point, okay, at this point. And this is y equal to y sub 0. So these are coordinates, now x sub 0, y sub 0, all right? And so do we the other illustration, okay? So we also have higher order partial derivatives. So the process here class is just similar to our ordinary uh, uh, differentiation. No? We will do the same, uh, we will apply the same rules in differentiation, but this time we have uh, partial differentiation. It means that when you take the derivative of a certain function, we have to hold one of the uh, variables constant and allowing the other variable to vary. Okay, so we have here uh, the notation. We have the partial derivative. This is the uh, second. No? If you look, if you see here the two, okay, take note the two here is in between this symbol and f. And if you look at the denominator, uh, two here, the exponent is on the x. All right. So this indicates the second uh, derivative, no? partial derivative, and this is equivalent to the partial the uh, derivative of the partial derivative of x with respect to x or this is equivalent to f of x x all right so this is the second order partial derivatives and similarly we also have this symbol or notation sorry this Okay, so this notation, so this also refers to partial derivative, uh, second partial derivative, or second order partial derivative uh, with respect to y. So we have here the partial derivative of the partial derivative of the function with respect to y, with respect to y, or this is uh, equivalent to f y y. So it means that uh, we had uh, or we have differentiated the function twice with respect to x in this case okay in this case here we are differentiating or we had we have differentiated the uh, function twice with respect to y okay so here in this uh, symbol so if you look at this uh, the denominator are no longer uh, having the power uh, 2 so in this case, this indicates that first we uh, find the derivative in the first differentiation with respect to x and the second differentiation with respect to y. So that's why we have here the partial derivative of the partial derivative of x with respect to y or simply f sub x y. Okay, so first we take the derivative of the function with respect to x holding y as a constant then after that we take the derivative of the resulting function with respect to uh, y, with uh, holding x as constant. 
So that is what is meant by this notation. And similarly, uh, here for this symbol, for this notation, so again, the, the two here that indicates that this is a second order partial derivatives. So we differentiate first in this uh, case class, we differentiate first with respect to y, holding x as constant. Then after that, we differentiate uh, the, fun the resulting function with respect to x, holding y as a constant. Alright, so I think uh, for this part class, we will limit only our discussion on this. Uh, there are other applications, especially uh, on the sketching of the curves. Uh, but still, uh, we will touch it very, very briefly. Alright? So, we have here another theorem. Let f be a function of two variables. If the... Okay, so as you remember, as you have uh, seen in the previous slide, so this is the partial derivative, uh, second order partial derivative class. Because first, we differentiate with respect to x holding y constant. Then next, we take the derivative resulting function with respect to y holding x as constant. And this one are continuous on some open disk. Then the second derivative of a function with respect to x and then with respect to y is equal to the, sec uh, the second order derivative when we differentiate the given function with respect to y, uh, holding x as constant, and then we take derivative again uh, with respect to x holding y constant on that disk. Okay, so we have here an illustration showing that the concept. So it's just like a, a chord. Okay, and then you just put your hands on the middle and stretch it. So we can have this kind of uh, illustration. Or we can also make it uh, looks like this same chord and then we just bury it like this so we have here a certain point then we have a tangent line so slope here is defined as the partial derivative of u so we have here u as our vertical uh, axis and we have the x-axis so you our slope here is defined as the partial derivative of u uh, with respect to x holding the other variable so we have uh, possibly y here uh, as constant and here uh, we take the derivative no? again uh, with respect to u so the resulting uh, uh, curve is it, it is a concave downward okay so another uh, presentation so it will be something like this now related to what we had in the previous slide so at this point, this is three-dimensional figure class. Okay, so at this point, uh, the, this point has coordinates x sub zero, y sub zero, and this is the okay. This corresponds to this one, and this is the height, no? uh, height of this point, uh, function of meaning the height of this uh, with respect to this coordinates. Okay, uh, if you can still remember in our uh, discussion before we can still use this class apply this concept and then combine it with a new concept when we are having uh, functions or function of two variables so we can still uh, use this concept class if you can relate it no, uh, if you can relate this uh, picture here from our discussion before uh, we have here a, a graph of the function and we have here the tangent line okay so for this kind of concept, we can use the rise over run. Now we just consider this triangle here. Okay. So at this point, uh, approaches or is move along this curve and approaches to this. So what will happen is that the, the delta x will uh, decrease. Okay. So and there's a limit. So the limit of that is what we call the slope. Okay. So similarly. Uh, we can use that concept also to apply this one. But this is now uh, in a three-dimensional three situation. Okay. Alright, so there are lots of concepts here, class. So I just want you to explore them. Um, I don't know if you have much time to complete all this uh, topic. But uh, at least you know how to, to find the, the derivative of uh, function with two or more variables so that's the most important thing that we need to achieve
for this part of our uh, uh, discussion in this semester. Okay, and then we can also use use the chain rule and differentiation. So chain rules for derivatives. So we have here a condition that if x is a function of if x is equal to x sub t and y is y sub t are differentiable at t and if z is a function of x and y is differentiable at point with coordinates x and y equal to x sub t and y sub t then z is a uh, uh, z is a function of x sub t y sub t is differentiable at t and in the formula we have this the derivative of z with respect to t is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t plus partial derivative of z with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to t where the ordinary derivatives are evaluated at t and the partial derivatives are evaluated at this uh, point with coordinates x and y so if each of the functions x x sub equal to x sub t and y equal to y sub t and z equal to y sub t is differentiable at t and if w is a function of x y and z is differentiable at the point with coordinates x y z equal to x sub t y sub t and z sub t then the function w equal to uh, f sub or a function of w is a function of the x sub t y sub t and z sub t is differentiable at t and it is given by this uh, expression so the derivative of w with respect to t is equal to the partial derivative of w with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t plus the partial derivative of w with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to t plus the, der the partial derivative of w with respect to z times the derivative of z with respect to t where the ordinary derivatives are evaluated at t and the partial derivatives are evaluated at this point with these coordinates x, y, and z. Okay, so these are the chain rules uh, for derivatives. So we have here a uh, very uh, useful illustration class to, to easily remember you know, that uh, chain rule. Okay, so we have here z, and we take the partial derivative of z with respect to x, and we take the partial derivative of z with respect to y. All right, and then we have here x and uh, y. So x, you can take the derivative here, or in our derivative, derivative of x with respect to t. All right, and we have here derivative of y uh, with respect to t. So the derivative of z with respect to t is just the sum, right? The sum of this, okay? Uh, we have here the left league and the right leagues. So the partial derivative of is just the product, no? You just multiply this, okay? And then sum up or add it with the product of this part here so derivative of z with respect to t it means uh, this one with respect to t so it's just the uh, product of the partial derivative of z with respect to x and the derivative of is the ordinary you know ordinary derivative of x with respect to t so you multiply the two then plus so on the other side we have the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the ordinary derivative of y with respect to t. Okay, so this is a very useful illustration class to help you remember this formula or to derive this formula. Okay, so theorems, uh, theorems on uh, uh, for chain rules for partial derivatives. So we have here f x equal to uh, a function of u and v and y is a function of u and v also have first order partial derivatives at point u v and if z is a function of x and y is differentiable at the point x point coordinates with coordinates x and y equal to x of u or a function of u and v and our y here is also a function of u and v then z is a function of the function of u and v, x is a function of u and v, and y is a function of u and v, has the or the first ordered 
partial derivatives at the point u and v given by this uh, formula. So partial derivative of z with respect to, to u is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to u, all right, plus partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to u. And the other formula is the partial derivative of z with respect to v equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to v plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to v. All right, so another uh, formula that you need to remember. If each function x equal to a function of x as a function of u and v, y equal to y as a function of u and v, and z equal to z as a function of u and v, has first order derivatives at the point u v, or the point with coordinates u and v, and if the function w equal to a function of x, y, z is the differentiable at the point with coordinates x, y, and z equal to x of a function of u and v, y as a function of v, and z as a function of u and v, then w is a function of x as a function of u and v, and y as a function of u and v, and z as a function of u and v, has first partial derivatives of the point u, v, or a point coordinates u and v, given by this. Okay, so this is for the three-dimensional uh, figure, no? So we have the partial derivative of w with respect to u equal to the product of the partial derivative of w with respect to x and the partial derivative of x with respect to u plus the, partial, the product of the partial derivative of w with respect to y and the partial derivative of y with respect to u plus the product of the partial derivative of w with respect to z and the partial derivative of z with respect to u. Okay, so that is with respect to v. But now the other one is with respect to, uh, sorry, the first one is with respect to u and the second one is with respect to v. Okay, so the partial derivative w with respect to v is equal to the product of the partial derivative of w with respect to x and the partial derivative of x with respect to v plus the partial derivative of w with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to v plus again the product of the partial derivative w with respect to z and the partial derivative of z with respect to v. So take note class on these highlighted uh, formulas. So these are uh, very important uh, formulas that we need to remember and understand also. So these are the uh, chain rules for partial derivatives. Okay, so in an illustration like uh, the one that we have shown a while ago, so it looks like this. Okay, so to help us easily understand. So we have here z and we uh, take the partial derivative of z with respect to x because we have x here and you know our x is a uh, uh, function of uh, u and v and our y here is also a function of u and v. Okay? So first we split z into two parts. So we have here partial derivative of z with respect to x. Okay, so with respect to x, all right. And the other side we have partial derivative of z with respect to y. So we have here y. And then from here, since uh, x is a function of v, u and v, so we take the partial, we split also this one. So we'll take the partial derivative of x with respect to u and partial derivative of x with respect to v. And the other one is partial derivative y with respect to u. And the other one is partial derivative y with respect to v. And then combining them, so we have therefore the partial derivative of z with respect to u. All right, so from here going down here. Okay, so we have uh, this is equivalent to the product of or the sum of the product of the partial derivative of z with respect to x and the partial der derivative of x with respect to u plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to u. Okay? So similarly, on the other side, so we have here, take note that we are considering with respect to u. Okay? 
Now we do the same thing, no, the same process, actually they are just the same class. But this time, we have the partial derivative of z with respect to v. In other words, you have to consider this one with respect to v. So a while ago, we used this with respect to u. Okay, so the formula is something like this. Partial derivative of z with respect to v is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to v plus partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to v. Okay, so again, to help us remember, uh, you don't need to memorize this. You just, if you know how to use this one. Okay. And now the most uh, complicated one. So that was for the two variables, but here we have three variables class. We have W, then we have our, our uh, function of three variables, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so we have here W, we split into three parts. All right, so we have part X, part Y, part Z. Then our X is a function of U and V. Our Y is also a function of U and V. And Z is a function of U and V. So these are the corresponding uh, formula, no? following the same process, the same procedure as in the previous slide. So like for example here, uh, when you take the partial derivative of W with respect to U, so it means from here going down here. So this is the sum, no? the sum of the products of first term. We have the partial derivative of W with respect to X. It, it refers to this one times the partial derivative of x with respect to u, okay? So that refers to this one. Then plus the partial derivative of w with respect to y, okay? We are at this point now. Times the partial derivative of y with respect to u. So take note that we are with respect to u, all right? Our leftmost denominator is with respect to u. Then plus... So in other words, class, for this illustration, we, we take this, no? We respect to you, we respect to you, we respect to you. Okay, so on the uh, third uh, term, so we have the partial derivative of W with respect to Z. Okay, this one. Then partial derivative of Z with respect to you. Okay, so from, it, is, it looks like this. From W going to Z and then going to V. Okay, so here we have from W to X to U. Then here from W to Y to U. On the other hand, so this is a different direction now. Huh? So we have, okay, uh, we, we use here another, uh, anyway, uh, that is for uh, for this part class. Okay, now if now if we are, the flow is something like this, W, X to V, so this is the resulting uh, formula. So, for example, derivative of W with respect to V equal to, so of course we need to, take this one, alright, so this is the one, then multiplied by this part here, partial derivative of x with respect to v, then plus, again, this one with respect to y, so this is it, then times this, alright, then similarly to this one, okay, so again, this one, partial derivative of w with respect to z, and this is it, and then with respect to v, this one, alright, now, if you have a case like this, no, uh, here in this illustration, we have x, y, and z um, as a function of two variables only. But what if the situation is that x, y, and z are functions of three variables, something like this? So the equation now uh, becomes more complex. Okay? So we have here... Uh, uh, for this part here, now with, with respect to, okay, so the same uh, formula class. Now we have derivative of, partial derivative of W with respect to P, okay, meaning from here going down to here. So you just use this, okay, this part, then multiply it by this part here, okay, then plus uh, with respect to P. So next is this one. Then next, okay, so this one, right, plus this, this, so use this one and multiply by this. Now, if you 
use for say for example with respect to theta so the same process huh? you have this one and this multiplied by this one with respect to theta then plus and this one uh, sorry so uh, z is a function of two variables only so only x and y as a function of three variables so that's why we have here in our formula so we don't have third term because uh, we don't have here uh, we don't have theta here as a function of z, uh, z as a function of theta nothing in the is equal to zero so that's why our formula uh, becomes like this okay so i hope you were able to follow class uh, the, the, the process this is very uh, simple process as, as long as you can draw this tree you know, this tree of the partial derivatives then you can easily formulate this uh, formula or equation so if the equation f of a function of x and y is equal to c defines y implicitly as a differentiable function of x and if the partial derivative of f uh, with respect to y is not equal to zero so we have here the formula that the derivative of y with respect to x is simply the the negative no? the negative of the ratio of the partial derivative of function with respect to x and the partial derivative of f with respect to y so the negative of this okay so this is another theorem so another theorem if the equation is a function of three variables equal to constant so defined by z implicitly as differentiable function of uh, both x and y and if the partial derivative of f with respect to z is not equal to zero so then we have this the partial derivative of z with respect to x is equal to the negative of the quotient of the partial derivative of the function with respect to x and the partial derivative of the function with respect to z and on the other hand we have the partial derivative of z with respect to y equal to the negative of the ratio or the quotient of the partial derivative of a function with respect to y and the partial derivative of the function with respect to z okay so we have here uh, so many so many definitions class so i will not uh, go uh, to them in details so if you have more time then please uh, kindly explore them so this part here involves already uh, something about uh, vectors so i think uh, we don't have much time to explain this in details but for your background no so that when you when you're discussing uh, topics on the numerical analysis or numerical methods at least you have already some ideas about these things okay so just explore them and hope uh, we've learned something and as i mentioned uh, we'll use some of those concepts here, most especially the partial derivatives of a uh, function that is a function of two variables and also the partial derivatives of a function of three variables. Okay, so just explore uh, the other parts of this one, of this, uh, especially those topic that is uh, finding the absolute extrema of continuous function of two or more variables on a closed and bounded set are so there are there are steps to follow okay and then uh, i think you can relate it with the uh, application uh, with the uh, ordinary derivatives okay so thank you very much and i hope uh, you're able to follow and if you have any question then just reserve it and we have uh, our uh, sample exercises to deal with this topic okay thank you very much and hope to see you again in our next video uh, some exercises application of the concept that we have learned from this uh, discussion so thank you very much uh, Bye for now.